I felt myself attracted specifically to Buddhism. Even before I knew much about Buddhism, I was calling myself a Buddhist. I've absolutely no idea why. Myself a Buddhist. I didn't really know what it meant, but I just felt that that, that was what it was all about. And when I actually came in contact with a real group of Buddhists, I found it really shattering, and I knew absolutely nothing about it at all. <laughs> a spiritual. From the first moment, I felt very much at home that I met a group of people who like uh, to be direct, who like to be honest, who like to take responsibility. I feel comfortable in the world, which is something that I never did before. I always felt uncomfortable. Everything was painful. Everything was difficult. Now, there's still a lot of things that are difficult, but I don't know, I seem to have more optimism. This is what happened with me, with the friends. I mean, from having my Zen teacher in Japan and then having a whole year of not having a teacher, I just sl slipped right down the mountain and back into the mud. And I knew that I w here I was down with the black slimy walls and I kn knew the most important thing was to find a teacher. Mm -hmm. And when I originally found the friends and the community, I knew that that was it and I just hung on. <laughs> for dear life. <laughs> After I finally got, you know, my, my fingers into a few little crevices. A Buddhist is one who goes for refuge. A Buddhist is one who says, I go for refuge with the Buddha, I go for refuge with the Dharma, I go for refuge with the Sangha. So essentially it is the act of going for refuge, of having a higher state of existence and consciousness as one's aim, following the path leading to that and following it in company with others who are also treading that path to that same goal. A Buddhist is one who takes those three refuges and does his or her best actually to put them into practice. Friends, Buddhism gave me a structure within which to work. It gave me um, a direction to follow. It gave me a path more than just sort of wandering hildy pildy everywhere, which I was doing before. I think that the structure of the friends really has everything. Mm. It has the teacher, the sangha, the people in the community with whom one can work out the emotional side, and all the facilities for meditation. retreat is an opportunity for people to get on with their spiritual development under comparatively ideal conditions. Most of our members uh, live in the city, work in the city, they try to meditate, they try to be mindful, but it's very, very difficult. So at least once or twice in the course of the year, they like to be able to get away into the country where for the whole day they can just have nothing else to think about, nothing else to do, except getting on with their spiritual practice and spiritual development. They get a sort of experience or realization of their own inner strength or even own inner being.
mindfulness is to do what you are doing with single mind. Usually, people do something thinking different things. Mind is not there. Mind is separated. This separation is suffering. So once the mind come back in oneness, no matter what you are doing, then no separation, no suffering. It's difficult, in fact, to, to keep one's mindfulness, um, you know, and, and sort of keep the continuity of what you're doing, you know, keep it flowing and be concentrated at the same time. It's very difficult to do, and it's a very good exercise being in the kitchen and trying to keep this flow of movement, being aware of other people, what they're doing, being responsive to other people, and at the same time getting on with your own job. I think people, they, they're sort of conscious of what they're eating, they think about what they're eating. And this makes it very um, good to cook for. You put them in holy and you've got to fish them out again. Yeah. This, this goes in that one, yeah? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that one should be about two. Do you want to put them in the dressing room? When I was in London, all I knew was that I was going on a retreat and that it was a chance to get back into something you know, real and nice. But I had no conception of how I was going to do it because I was just so cityfied. And like every day here, you know, it takes on new meanings, different meaning, more meaning, you know? So, you know, I, I come here because the experience is good and because it, it's, it's something real, you know, which, you know, every day you get more in touch with. You know, I can't say more than that, you know. I,
sit in stillness, in silence. Watch one's breathing, slow, calm, deep breathing. And watch one's breathing with full attention. When the silence, stillness, calmness of mind comes back, that is the oneness of mind. And this is a base of action in oneness. With this mind, any action, each moment, has no duality, no separation, so no suffering. This mind is one. Mind and body, self and others, self and nature, with this mind. There you feel egolessness, when you forget ego, you become free, you become universe, and you become flower, tree, mountain, sky. That is happiness. Meditation brings together all one's energies. A lot of the energies are unconscious or repressed or suppressed. So as you start to concentrate, it's as though all the energies are brought together into a single focus. And with those energies come all sorts of bits and pieces from the past that you had suppressed or repressed. So if there's confusion there, it's bound to come out into the open as, for instance, one practices meditation and comes to understand oneself better. Uh, sometimes, of course, one had thought that one understood oneself. One had everything, you know, neatly tied up. But as one starts meditating, things start coming out into the open uh, that you'd successfully kept concealed, perhaps. Eh? Uh, your life, in a way, becomes more complicated, more chaotic even more confused. If I sit and just concentrate on my practice or whatever, mindfulness and breathing, so there's suddenly, so towards the end, that there's been all this pain and, and, and sort of crap, really, that's been going around. And I try and ignore it and concentrate on the ideal. Just concentrate. It suddenly overwhelms and takes over and I'm sort of crawling on the floor. And so I, 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 I still can't relate to this because meditation is a means of stirring up what is ever in the depths. It brings it up. And if what's down there is, is, is not exactly pleasant and is not exactly blissful, I don't see how one can ignore the problem side of it. I mean, I found out myself that, like, I blocked anger for years without sort of being consciously aware of it. And then as soon as I became consciously aware of how I'd blocked this anger, it just came out in a clear sort of rush and took me over completely. And it was frightening. And having released it sort of made me far more aware of other emotions as I am blocking them and how I do it. When I feel a negative emotion coming, then like, I'll really get into it and be really negative. Yeah. Um, so like, if I feel aggressive, I'll get really aggressive. Yeah. And um, if I hate people, then I'll really hate people and like, dig it. And, um, you know, feel good that I'm such a shit. You know, sort of, <laughs> you know, I'm a real shit. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a while, you just get to laugh at yourself. And um, you become so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all the negativity just like flows away because, um, you know, it's funny. This is what I mean by not taking things too seriously. If you take your positive feelings seriously, 
um, then you, you get into a holier-than-now thing. Mm. If you take your negative feeling seriously, then you get into a real depression. Mm. If you don't take any of it seriously, then, uh, you know, things just flow. I know, that will rot into the earth, as intended. You can't just leave a bag of feathers on there. You can't dig it in. I can. She must can do anything. <laughs> I, I yeah, can see the bloody bag of feathers anywhere. It looks bloody awesome. It doesn't. It's your eyes. You, you, don't, you can't see beauty. <laughs> and you see boy, you're around the bend. <laughs> Definitely. It's beautiful. Turn the on for a minute. I don't know. Watch the cups. Well, hang on a minute. It may seem as though, after taking up meditation and after taking up spiritual life, things, uh, in a sense, are worse than they were before. Or, if you like, more confused. But this is a stage that nearly everybody has to pass through. The ego, the old self, has no longer got everything under control. I mean, the ego itself is thrown off balance. Eh? And a, a new self has to form or reform at a higher level. It's only then that the, the confusion is, I won't say brought under control, but the el different elements that are now confusedly arranged just fall into a harmonious pattern, mm -hmm. a sort of mandala, if you like. So if you're really trying to be an individual, you won't take refuge in the warmth and comfort of the friends from all the difficulties that arise, but use other individuals or take of other individuals in the friends to help you live through and get over these things and be an individual, a person who's quite capable of standing on his own feet. And because he can stand on his own feet, is therefore capable of truly relating to other people. When I joined the friends, I guess I was suffering. And I was looking for a way of dealing with my problems. There are lots of unexpressed things in my life, in my nature. Unborn things, which are now being born, which are growing. I have a much bigger or more adequate self-experience now, experience of myself. I feel alive, I'm growing. <laughs> 